Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog. Today is February 1st, 2024. Let's talk crime, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now folks, uh, in my opinion, and we'll make this one man's opinion, you don't have to agree with me. Police will make up a story at times to justify an arrest, especially when they believe the person they are arresting is guilty of a major crime. Police don't want the arrest thrown out because they conducted an illegal search, lacked probable cause, or did not Mirandize a suspect. The arrest of David Berkowitz, the convicted son of Sam, is one such situation in my opinion. The folklore is that a woman was out walking her dog and saw a man. She did not know who the man was, had never seen him before in her life. He was not doing anything wrong, but she thought he looked threatening. She goes inside her apartment and then hears gunshots. When the police questioned her, she tells them that she saw a car parked by a hydrant right by her building get ticketed by a police officer shortly before the shooting. According to the folklore, the police then look up the ticket and find out that the car was David Berkowitz's. That was his big mistake that ended his serial murder spree, if you believe the public narrative. Had he not parked in front of a hydrant at the murder scene, the police might not have solved the Son of Sam murders. When they go to Yonkers to see if David Berkowitz witnessed anything the night of the crime, they find his parked car. When they look in the car, they see handwriting that matches the Son of Sam's handwriting, and they also see something that looks like a gun. When Berkowitz, later at night, goes to his vehicle, he's carrying a gun in a paper bag. When the police approach the vehicle with their guns drawn, Berkowitz is alleged to have smiled and said, okay, you got me. When the officer asked, who do we have? Berkowitz responds, the son of Sam. The police are then able to match the gun that Berkowitz carried with him into the car with the gun used in at least some of the murders. There is an excellent two-part show called Very Bad People on ID Network that is done by Donnie Wahlberg with an excellent team of producers and folks behind the cameras. It is very convincing and very well presented. What I want us to do here is to ask a question that needs to be asked. Is this story true? I was raised in New York City. I remember the paranoia. I remember when he was called the 44 caliber killer. Right? I remember the drawings of the alleged son of Sam. Let's talk about the story and let's talk about some facts. The story conveniently gives the police probable cause to arrest. Berkowitz gets a parking ticket on the night that he shoots at two people, killing one and blinding the other. It's only because a vigilant neighbor walking her dog passed by him and then saw a car get ticketed that the police were then able to track the ticket back to David Berkowitz. Call me a skeptic, but parts of the story seem made up to me. I believe some well-intentioned policemen and lawyers came up with a story to justify the policemen's actions. So let's look at and possibly attack different parts of the story. 
Let's be clear here. I'm not saying David Berkowitz is innocent. I'm not saying David Berkowitz did not confess. But let's point out a possibly fictional story to justify parts of a police investigation. We owe ourselves that since we want police to follow certain protocols to protect our rights. Right? Remember, we are all innocent until proven guilty. We also want to avoid police profiling suspects and coming up with stories to justify their arrests. So let's talk about the holes in the official version. First, the woman walking her dog never sees David Berkowitz get out of the car that got ticketed. By her own admission, she just walks by him on the sidewalk. She didn't like the way he looked. She didn't see him do anything wrong. She goes inside her apartment and then hears gunshots. She doesn't witness the shooting. She doesn't even see David Berkowitz with a gun. While she's an ear witness, she's not an eye witness. The shooting takes place in a well-populated part of Brooklyn, New York City, where there are literally hundreds of people who live nearby. This is not rural Kansas. Let's talk about the ticket that was issued to the car that was parked next to the fire hydrant. When the police tried to find that ticket it was not in their system. The police officer who allegedly wrote the ticket did not turn it in for days. A police officer then steps forward and says that he wrote four tickets that night that he did not turn in. The reason he claims he didn't turn in the tickets was because of all the hubbub over the shooting that took place. This story sounds patently unbelievable to me. A murder takes place that fits the M.O. of a serial killer that has made the front page of multiple New York City newspapers. You're a cop in the area and you don't think to turn in your parking tickets? Let's keep in mind that this is in the 1970s. The cops are not entering their tickets into a computer database from the scene where they're issuing the tickets. Rather, the cops on location are handwriting the ticket. This opens the door for fraud. For legal reasons, and I'm serious, for legal reasons, let me say, I'm not saying anyone lied, but sloppiness and chain of custody issues can negate even the best evidence. I find it hard to believe that a serial killer is killing people throughout New York City and that a police officer near a shooting would then forget to turn in his traffic tickets near the crime scene for multiple days, at least two days. Let's go one step further. The Brooklyn police decide to call the Yonkers police because the ticketed car the one where the ticket wasn't turned in for at least two days, had a Yonkers address. In one of the biggest coincidences in the annals of crime, the Yonkers civilian police dispatcher who answers the call from the Brooklyn police, according to the official version, just happened to be the daughter of Sam Carr, David Berkowitz's neighbor. That's the official story. To paraphrase Humphrey Bogart, of all the people in Yonkers, the police just happened to get Sam Carr's daughter on the phone when they call Yonkers Police Department. Does that sound believable to you? I'm just asking. We Carr worked as a civilian dispatcher in Yonkers and was the first person to receive a call from NYPD detective 
James Justice, about David Berkowitz. She told Justice that Berkowitz had shot their black Labrador, Harvey, who belonged to her father, Sam, possibly because it was barking. She is able to then tell the Brooklyn police that her father, Sam, thought that David Berkowitz had shot the father's dog. Now here again, Wheat Carr's father, Sam, did not see David Berkowitz shoot his pet. Nor did Wheat Carr, the civilian police dispatcher that Brooklyn police just happened to get on the phone when they called the Yonkers Police Department. Nor did anyone we know of. Folks, the idea that David Berkowitz shot Sam Carr's dog, at this stage at least, is pure speculation. Sam Carr is speculating that his neighbor, David Berkowitz, shot his dog. But the police hear the story from the random Yonkers civilian police dispatcher who answers the phone and who happens to be Sam Carr's daughter. We're supposed to believe that this whole episode is a coincidence. Let me also point out the obvious. Getting a parking ticket in New York City isn't the same as killing someone. The fact that David Berkowitz got a parking ticket along with others that night near the scene of a murder does not suggest in my eyes that he's the person who committed the murder. The cop who did not turn in the Berkowitz ticket also failed to turn in three others. Based in part on the he shot my father's dog story from Sam Carr's daughter Wheat Carr the Brooklyn police then decide that they're going to travel to Yonkers to investigate David Berkowitz. I believe at this moment, the police knew that they did not have enough evidence to arrest David Berkowitz. Understand, the cops knew where he lived based on the car registration. Do they go to his apartment? No, they don't. They don't go to his apartment even though the police narrative, and I believe you need this narrative, right, to justify what happens next. The police narrative was that they went to Yonkers simply to find out if David Berkowitz had witnessed anything the night of the murders. Right, let me applaud whoever came up with that reason why they went to Yonkers. Keep in mind, all they know at this point is that his car got a ticket in the neighborhood and that the police dispatcher told them that her father believed that Berkowitz had shot the family dog. At this point, he supposedly is not a suspect. Rather, he's a possible witness. Despite this imaginative police narrative, when the police get to Yonkers, they don't go to Berkowitz's apartment to ask him if he saw anything on the night of the crime when his car was in the neighborhood of the murders. Instead, the police find David Berkowitz's vehicle. Right now, keep in mind, folks, the police don't have a warrant here. All they know about the vehicle is that it was in the neighborhood, if you believe the two-day late ticket, that the vehicle got ticketed in the neighborhood where the crime was committed. Now, the police story is that they walked up to David Berkowitz's vehicle when Berkowitz was not inside of the vehicle. When they look in the vehicle from the street, Right? They're not in the vehicle, they're outside the vehicle. When they look in the vehicle from the street, they see a document that they believe looked like it had the Son of Sam's handwriting on it. Now, I think we all know, listening to this story, that none of these cops were handwriting experts. I think we also know that it's unlikely that a cop could look from the street through a rolled up car window into the car 
and then determined that the handwriting in the car perfectly matched the handwriting of the Son of Sam that was published in papers like the New York Daily News. At this point, if you believe the police story, at this point, if they saw handwriting that matched the Son of Sam's handwriting, would they get a warrant? Keep in mind, the son of Sam at that point is on a serial killing murder spree. Folks, they don't get a warrant. Do they go to Berkowitz's apartment to arrest him? Right, they supposedly believe that the handwriting matches the son of Sam. Right, they even hear that Berkowitz may have shot a neighbor's dog. Do they go to Berkowitz's apartment to arrest him? No, they don't. In other words, in my opinion, even the cops realized that this evidence was so weak that the police at this stage did not have enough to arrest someone they thought was a serial killer. We are to believe that instead of going to Berkowitz's apartment, the undercover police then staked out Berkowitz's vehicle. Eventually at night, so the police had to be there for some period of time. Berkowitz walks back to his vehicle with a paper bag that has a gun in it. We don't have to worry about the police reading Berkowitz's rights. Because according to the police narrative, before they could even question Berkowitz, he spontaneously blurts out, okay, you got me. When they ask him, who do we have? He says, the son of Sam. A clever law student could argue that Berkowitz, once he said, okay, you got me, the police should have read him his Miranda rights before questioning him at all. Let's also keep in mind that Berkowitz did not match, again, did not match many of the drawings of the Son of Sam. Compare the cover drawing that was on the New York Daily News with the actual David Berkowitz, who looks at least 25 to 35 pounds heavier. There's also another drawing of the alleged Son of Sam killer from the Brooklyn shooting that has the killer looking slim with an early Beatles type haircut. Right, Tommy Zeno, who witnessed the shooting, describes someone who looks very different from David Berkowitz. Right, Berkowitz, as you can see behind me, had curly hair and was not slim. I want people to also consider the crime rate in New York City in the 1970s. Folks, it was high. When police approach a suspect and the suspect says, whether it's New York City, whether it's Oakland, whether it's Boston, whether it's Philly, whether it's Chicago, when a suspect says, okay, you got me, that could mean anything. The suspect could have unpaid taxes. The suspect could be dealing drugs. The suspect may have shot his neighbor's dog. The line by itself does not imply that the suspect is a wanted serial killer. Nonetheless, the well-meaning police, without a Miranda warning, chose to let Berkowitz talk. The police, at least according to the Wahlberg depiction, even have their guns drawn. Now again, I'm not saying Berkowitz is innocent. While I have my doubts on whether he committed all of the murders, I believe Berkowitz likely committed some of the murders. But as we look at the official version of events for many crimes, particularly on these shows where the police are proud of themselves for having caught someone who has some guilt, right? We as a society need to take the extra step 
and ask the question, gee, is all of this information true? Am I supposed to believe that these undercover cops who went to Yonkers did so simply to find out what Berkowitz knew as a witness? Right, folks, understand if I'm a jury member and the cops understand and he's lying about that, I'm going to suspect that he's lying about more than that. Right? Your rights are only as good as the extent to which people actually follow them. Right? Let me also say, too, Yonkers is a big place. New York City is a big place. I'm supposed to believe that the person who answers the phone in Yonkers just happens to be Sam Carr's daughter. Wow. What a big coincidence. Right? Let me say, too, the police are staking out Berkowitz's car. Right? When they approach the car, they have their guns drawn. Right? Now, Berkowitz does have a firearm on it. Berkowitz quickly confesses to the crime. Right? But let's talk about the cop's state of mind at that time. Right? Why isn't there a warrant? You believe this guy is the son of Sam. That's like believing someone's the Boston Strangler. Right? The cops want us to believe that they were able to identify the son of Sam's handwriting in Berkowitz's car. Right? I believe the reason you don't have a warrant is because you can't get a warrant. Let me say this too. The cops are in Yonkers and they suspect that David Berkowitz is the son of Sam. Right? They know his car was at the murder scene. Why not go to his apartment? Why not confront him? So let's just say, you know, it's great that David Berkowitz got caught. Right? Berkowitz at different times, by the way, has hinted that others were involved in the murders and that he was part of a satanic cult. Let me also say, too, that if you look at all the drawings of David Berkowitz, my goodness, do they look different. Right? The woman with the dog is interesting because she's the key witness and she knows so little. Didn't see the murder... Didn't see David Berkowitz do anything wrong. Berkowitz walks past her. He doesn't shoot her. He doesn't shove her. He doesn't kick her dog. He doesn't do anything untoward toward her. Right? So, let's just say this case has many questions. Right? Either the police in trying to talk with the witness, decided instead to look at Berkowitz's car, to then stake the car, to then draw their guns, right? The story gets swept under the rug because Berkowitz ultimately confessed. But as a society, folks, we should nonetheless be disturbed. There are many holes here. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.